We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. To bring in enlightenment in people, then you are wasting their time. It's a total waste of time. I don't care what else happens in that church. If at the end of every service, the people leave the way they came, no growth, no wisdom, no access to power, no enlightenment, then uh, it's a total waste of time. Total waste of time. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, we thank God for investing so much of His grace upon our lives such that every time we come, we are guaranteed that we will rise from one dimension of knowledge to the other in the name of Jesus. I'm teaching on the Dominion Mandate, part one. The Dominion Mandate. I think this is very timely and it's very important that we come into this understanding. It's been a phrase that has been greatly used in the body of Christ. It's been largely abused um, because it's been used without understanding. Praise the Lord. And I'm trusting that God will grant us grace. Revelation chapter 5. We'll read 2 verses 9 and 10. Help us tonight, Holy Spirit. The dominion mandate. Revelation 5 verse 9 and 10. Are we there? It says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us unto God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. We're going to read verse 10 together. One to read. And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth one more time and has made us unto our god kings and priests there are certain doctrines please listen just a little theological background there are certain doctrines that are considered foundational to the understanding of any believer when you get born again you don't just grow haphazardly you don't grow carelessly it matters the doctrines that are introduced to a believer at his encounter with Christ this will guide your growth the efficiency of your growth or otherwise are we together not every dimension of knowledge is needed at every time it is important that the informations that are supplied believers especially as they grow are strategic enough to be able to make their growth useful it's like building i always give this analogy after you lay a foundation the next thing is not a zinc is that true if you put a zinc you're going to destroy the building you can't say you have a house a zinc is part of the requirement but there will be a time for zinc so theologically speaking there are excuse me certain foundational truths um, and I believe that one of the reasons why believers are not very mature 
is because there is a haphazard communication of spiritual truths and realities it is my considered opinion and this is also theologically agreed that when believers come into christ the first thing that they ought to know is to have a thorough understanding of what we know and believe to be the finished work of jesus that is the very next foundational understanding there's no point teaching them about money there's no point teaching them about service in the ministry if they stumble across a service where that is being taught then that's all right but where you are training and building people there is a system so they must understand the the realities of redemption number two they must be open to the ministry of prayer any believer that gets born again must be open to the ministry of prayer that is the system with which their spiritual senses are activated if you do not give them an opportunity to be open to the ministry of prayer that activity will become very boring because they will become carnally minded are we together number three they must be open to the ministry of the holy spirit now technically speaking everything we deal with in the kingdom revolves around the ministry of the holy spirit but i mean they must be introduced consciously to the possibility of a relationship with a person called the holy spirit they must begin to train their spiritual senses to hear god to understand the word to interpret scripture that's the fourth thing they must be exposed to the ministry of the word the ministry of the word its power to transform their minds then several other things now become very useful when these basics are in place then when you come in with things like kingdom service when you now come in with things like the anointing when you come in with other aspects you know the deeper things of the spirit they have been able to have access to a solid foundation but the moment you get a believer born again and the next thing you are drumming them on principles of money financial reward breakthrough restoration as good as those things are they rape sorry to use that word but that is the best expression they rape that believer and put that believer in a very vulnerable position nothing that brings a sequence of growth will interest the believer again are we together now because the believer just wants to receive to sit down and learn i'm not interested or someone just gets born again and you are not exposing them to the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit it looks powerful until you watch them misuse it they will access the anointing and begin to walk in many things but lack of character will destroy it are we together now and sooner or later those people will tell you two months they will tell you they are called into ministry six months later they are already in trouble it's important that believers be guided i am persuaded that this should be the factors that should be examined even in appointing responsibilities in the body of christ paul taught us that one who is a bishop a pastor and that applies to anyone a deacon and ordained worker there should be some level of track record of staying in the house of god i'm just giving us a background this is the challenge with celebrities and the house of god celebrities those who were maybe in the world and were celebrity musicians celebrity businessmen when they come into the church they expect the same spotlight correct the same honor so you look at this guy and let's assume he was once a very worldly musician for instance are we together now and then he now gives his life to christ and in a bid to honor him you graduate him unnecessarily into realms and dimensions he has not afforded he sits down where the ministers are sitting you give him offering help and raise offering he stands on stage and you see him speaking babylon you know that this guy he has not he, he has not stabilized he's just barely entering the kingdom but you appreciate it because he has been a celebrity let me tell you whoever you are when you come in the kingdom you must start and join that line you see that yes honor be given to you for your for 
exposing your value to be rewarded but there must be that system of building i think this is a word from god to many people already all these hilarious ordinations hilarious laying on of hands hilarious appointment of people someone gets born again in two weeks he's ordained sent somewhere we must be careful it will lead to a lot of inefficiency children leading children babes the bible called them unfruitful in the handling of the word of god and so when challenges rise up for on account of the word's sake they do not sustain the spiritual stamina because they have no track record in the spirit they have not learned honor they have not learned authority they have not learned that there are seasons in believers lives where you have to stand they have not like people like watchmani would teach they have not learned to sit they have not learned to walk they have not learned to stand one brutal attack and their whole life is finished completely everything are we blessed this kingdom is built through a system and it is important please hear me the way you build matters are we together in construction we know there are there are structures that are built by careless architects and builders and you see that structure no stability is bent anyhow a little rain and half of it everything falls down right to the louvers and there are others that are that are solid like the buildings in dubai meters high above the sky and they are they are with razor sharp precision they were built intentionally every house is built by some man but the bible says god is the builder he says and i will build my church the only thing that is built from the top is the grave never forget this that the only thing you start building from the top is the grave i just felt stirred in my spirit to put that because i want us to experience breakthrough i want us to love god and know god but there is nothing that will replace sitting down to learn sequentially to grow especially for those of us who probably got born again this year or we rededicated our lives and all of that and we thank god for the kind of grace in this house someone can be born again and in two weeks is already on fire and people see you and say pastor and then you now enlighten yourself from that flattery and say wow that means this is speed no men cannot see the heart except it is given to them hmm? men see the outward appearance so their interpretation is based on what they are seeing ah the last time this guy held a mic in one fellowship the way he prayed in tongues and then you use the construction of the tongues to mean he has graduated in the spirit is a joke the level of stamina it takes to be trusted with people is is a dimension that only god can approve very few people know the level of spiritual stamina it takes to host an anointing and to even lead people matter matter you are worried and offended about several things but it says one thing is needful hmm? god must work on you work on you that's why you see us keep teaching let me tell you there are people in this ministry by the grace of god and with all humility i can select people at random at random and not not to be cynical most of them would qualify to be resident pastors in many circles and many denominations but they are not even leaders god is saying sit down I'm ministering to someone because you look at everybody around you this one reverend this one started his church yesterday this one this and you you are not even even an esco in a department and you say is it that lord you are not seeing me huh do, do, are, are you trying to say i'm not making progress whoever told you appointment is proof of progress if the lifespan of your commitment in the house of god is to be seen and to be appointed into offices then it's a disaster 
so you see people fight like politics oh there is a vacancy that vacancy is a deacon and you see everybody coming to greet the pastor pastor good afternoon i just came to bless you and to let you know what is happening behind your back i've got you covered that's a manifesto that's 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 political party when jesus was going to select people that he would train the bible says he spent the whole night jesus the fountain of wisdom knew to appoint men to trust them with responsibility is a serious thing you judge by the eye and see Eliab and say surely this is God's anointed and God said uh -uh, that's not how I choose oh look at the kind of people Jesus fasted all through the night to choose you fast through the night and choose weaklings thieves fearful people why fast do you have to fast to see them he fasted and saw what they would become as weak as they were they were already scribes and pharisees jumping and saying look just restructure our mindset and that's all we have reduced the journey and god looked at a tax collector wicked man very stupid people and said this is exactly what i'm looking for saul is on his way to damascus and god is looking at him what an apostle killing people you see the way god sees ba let me teach you something if you don't learn this you will make too many mistakes in your leadership and your church there are people seated here inside and outside let me tell you the dimensions they are walking in the spirit probably even me have not entered those dimensions yet they come quietly you see them sit down they are watching they are learning reminds me of how many how students are the real person who is taking first position is somewhere he will write every note with the example and the person who is second to the last yeah i know that example it came from uh, that that uh, book I, I know this man i know the book he's reading yet he's taking second to the last at the end of the exam but the one who is diligent will come and sit down and listen never promote people emotionally Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Don't love people too much to unnecessarily expose them to levels. And do not flatter yourself into thinking, I think I am fit for a level. Let God himself accredit you. It says, Paul, a man approved, approved. There are illegal people. The same way there are jam centers. There are authorized jam centers. Correct? There are authorized hospitals. There are authorized drugs. And every authorized drug has a registration number. We call it NAFTAC registration number. Correct? Whether the drugs are big or small. Now, there are certain people who can connive with other nations and smuggle in drugs. Put the drugs and put camels on them. Do all kinds of things it does not make it legal the fact that it was successfully smuggled those drugs in themselves may not kill but they have not been vetted by the institute that was put called navdak that's how it is spiritually you can get up and move and yet you have not been approved let me tell you when people are approved on earth they are assigned thrones in heaven a throne is a symbol of authority those thrones are not just thrones like they are thrones that affirm anointings and mantles and graces that's why somebody can come no rema no revelation but there is a track record and a throne that backs their words they can speak they can stand on behalf of heaven and speak and plead your case and turn around something that has no business turning around and you wonder how are they doing it brothers and sisters i want you to preach to yourself i receive grace to stay until he accredits me i receive grace to stay can you turn it into a prayer in one minute i believe that is the spirit of god that just led me to communicate that i receive grace to stay pray oh the head of department prayer is not seeing me are the leaders not seeing me is this pastor femi not seeing me Worship him. Are they not seeing me to give me songs? No. 
never lift yourself stay for when the season of appearing comes let me tell you no mortal man can stop you pray I receive grace Shabrakato Sadabala Karyatash Lembreketo Kasubri Atakatash Brato Sobrende Gasho Brakatosia Pray 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 Lord let me be built to its finest Let me be one of your finest battle axes on earth thoroughly furnished thoroughly furnished thoroughly furnished not half baked thoroughly furnished unto all good works i receive the grace to stay i receive the grace to learn i receive the grace to be built it may take time but i stay I receive grace I receive grace hallelujah hallelujah I will get to our, our teaching proper but I'm just stressing this oh God is calling you to be a kingdom financier and all of a sudden you are killing yourself trying to wear every cloth trying to buy every watch don't die for nothing God is calling you to be a prophet and all of a sudden you are forcing yourself to see you are not seeing anything this thing is not trial and error keep walking with God one day it will be like a joke you will wake up one morning into a portal a vista just opens up and say so this is what happens until then you force yourself you will see something and what you see will destroy your life destroy others you will bring all sorts of things because you are not trained I watch people and let me tell you this is with all humility I watch people and I see them not able to hold the sword of the spirit I see the disaster that they cause with those swords it takes a skill to hold that sword the Bible says with wise counsel make war it, that you have a sword does not just mean you no 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 Solomon held that sword in such a way that they could know which child you, you have to hold it well otherwise you will kill people when you are trained by God as a leader you will know when to talk and when to keep quiet they may expect you to speak but you have been so trained full of knowledge yet silent look at Moses a man who was heavily anointed yet he never prophesied he kept quiet when the spirit on him came on 70 people none of them could stand yet all of that was in one man and he had self-control A lot of childishness that goes on in the body of Christ I'm preaching to someone some of those things look like the pathways for recognition you will never this honor let me tell you is a mantle it comes from heaven with a track record you can fake it and try to gather a lot of mediocre around your life but if there is no this this ranking you see increase it is God God left it to himself plant water you can increase yourself are we together men can look at your life and know you are growing preaching there are nine things I won't teach you today there are nine things that characterize the ministry of the world nine preaching or teaching what we call pulpit ministry is the eighth of the ninth eight of it are we together so the ability to preach well is only one over nine nobody gets a with one over nine there are many other aspects are we together one of the requirements is to have the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity you must you must there are times God exposes you to things you have no business going through it has nothing to do with you that is the price you pay for carrying the anointing for the people it is the burden of the people he puts upon your spirit you must taste of it to qualify to minister to them yet there are all kinds of 
people moving around and will tell you I am this and that I am apostle this I am prophet this I am that and that and your name is Emeka I say yes and then the man means that because you said it correctly he is a prophet and all kinds of blunders begin to come you break people's marriages destroy people's destiny because of imbalance all sorts of things i i am a kingdom millionaire i i don't take water in a, in a sachet again i have to use bottle because i'm going far my destiny is far and we do stupid things in the name of i believe in seeing well but faith is not foolishness now let me tell you the danger here is when you look around you you will see very few people subscribing to this pattern and it can intimidate you you are human there are times you sit down and say lord but give me an opportunity to and god says you are about to derail you don't know the honor i'm bringing to your life you now want to destroy or run away from all this balloon success up today down tomorrow anointed today you crash tomorrow no god can give you consistency 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 the average ministry that is started in Nigeria, eight out of every ten close before the year is finished. Yet you see the convictions. God told me. I saw it. So, 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 our vision. I saw this and that. And in that vision, we are going to the nations. <sighs> if you do not understand what I'm teaching you tonight, your life will be a track record of blunders. Sincere encounters that will never manifest in the earth realm till you go to be with the Lord. I want to save you years of pain. Are you ready to pray now? Open my eyes. Lift your voice and pray. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you're the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Pray. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. hallelujah listen to me there were two brothers in the bible born of the same father we understand called cain and abel two of them went to sacrifice and they thought they were doing the same thing listen every time there is no response from heaven find out why because he said if you did it rightly i have no bias for you if you did it rightly there are dimensions i have not entered as a person I don't get responses from heaven it's a sign that there is a level of alignment i need to step into because benny Hinn will come under the same condition and there will be a response from heaven there are there are things i now do and i get responses from heaven that i did not get a response yesterday use the response from heaven to prove it's a sign you've been doing everything around your life there is no corresponding response why continue to flatter yourself i'm not doubting that you are a prophet but i'm saying sit down you carry what you call prophecy you will never go to the nations that way he cannot commit the heart of kings to you oh i'm a pastor call me pastor don't call me brother i'm not a brother i'm a pastor settle down the bible said they shall call you ministers of our god it's not a name you invent for yourself it's an inevitable product of a track record there are many of us already fighting superiors in different ministries they are not allowing men see me if you ever think that way it's a stupid thought from antichrist it's from the devil the bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel are we together i just feel we should pray one more prayer again say lord i will wait until that grace comes i will wait 
until I step into the fullness of the grace and the ministry. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I will pray. I will wait. I am proud of where I am. My contemporaries may go ahead of me, but I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. There is a making. There is a making. Lakata praka sodo makariana balata. Being tried as gold. Being tried as gold. The gold of offering. The finest of them. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands? Are the keys to eternal life? Hey, a little bit, a little bit. Soon your day will come. Start working you, changing everything. Will you swallow your pride tonight? Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little yeah, a little yeah. Soon your day will dawn. Is that working? crying around and looking for invitation invite me i can sing pastor invite me to your church i promise you won't be disappointed no no stay in the secret place let everyone go remain there he will sharpen you mm. sharpen you then when you come out you will be like the gold of offer the finest of it finest of it no guessing listen you see I had a vision day before yesterday when Ife, the great land of Ife, and I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw certain things about my future. And I saw dimensions of grace and the anointing that made what I was walking now like child's play. After that vision, I just laid down. I said, Lord, thank you. This is the exact motivation I need. Because you see, when men clap for you, you need to see something fast that will make where you are walking now look like shadows i said that's right that's right it is dangerous to have a measure of result the enemy of success is the last one not failure because it can keep you i can prophesy too it's a little but at least i'm there i can minister too i lay hands out of 10 people at least somebody must be healed and you want to be given the keys of nations which somebody must be healed one out of ten is a joke that there is a dimension you enter into that you show up in a place 
and brothers and sisters is is like is like a charm you move and shift things around this is the bible says herein is our father glorified when you bear much food you can bear little 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 result because the art head is blunt i look at lives today with the privilege of the grace god has given me and i'm almost crying because i wish i had this anointing years ago i saw people in situations i wanted to help them but i had not accessed the level of grace it took and i look at people now and as great as god has helped me i see dimensions where i need to reach out to people but i see that i'm still bankrupt of those dimensions what have you done that you are beginning to boast i have sons these are my sons these are my daughters where where don't let that pride kill you just because someone acknowledge you and just call you daddy or call you mommy or call you papa it's just their way of honoring your mentorship you are now carried away this is my son son stand up this is my daughter and god is watching you and say leave him there leave him there fast because this guy will be a disaster when he rises you are watched for a season then a thousand cubits is measured again and you step into another level listen this anointing you see the body that carries it must be prepared otherwise it can kill you by itself i'm not talking of demons the anointing is like a sharp knife you use it wrongly to tear you and kill you the very owner elisha died but there was an anointing on his boat don't think the anointing is just something that comes there is mastery it's like standing on slippery ground if you don't know how business is done in deep waters you will slaughter yourself with the anointing because you see when the anointing comes you must understand things in the spirit there are certain things that god can pardon others but you won't go free because of the level of grace you have carried swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life it's a little here a little there soon your day will dawn start working you changing everything yeah. hallelujah I've had the privilege of receiving so many awards many of you never know I've not announced one to you several awards you will never see one on my table I don't trust those things I thank God for them but I don't believe them <clears throat> you see if you if 10 of you write a test ah huh, over 100 and you get 12 over 100 and you are the highest you can get prize for first position but did you pass so you have to you don't just say i'm the one leading this thing how far with respect to god's expectation we are talking of dimensions of graces and anointings that have not been seen we are talking of ancient portals opened up hosting god like gods on the earth we are talking of dimensions where miracles are worked unconsciously not all this jamboree and talking and jacking we are talking of putting nations under the feet of jesus stopping the sun to rise over nations until jesus becomes lord joshua did it when you get satisfied with little results oh she got healed oh i prayed for the woman she got pregnant oh i prayed for that dead baby he came back to life you have pegged yourself and you will never rise far am i wasting your time if this is all we do today can we just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes as an indication of our interest to continue lord i'm not leaving your presence not at this time Thank you for what you have done, but Lord, there is more. Thank you for.
for the miracles but there are higher levels of fire there are higher levels of power there are higher dimensions rankings in the spirit the kind of training and the kind of weapon do you know North Korea has weapons we've not seen the potentials yet they have been building it nobody is scared of what he already understands the potentials no we've seen the bombs we've seen the ballistic missiles America has weapons that nobody in the world has seen he said thou at my battle axe my weapons of war with you I will beat down nation he didn't say you have it you are it thou at my battle axe listen as darkness looms around the horizons of our family and cities brothers and sisters it will take more than good preaching it will take more than good Greek and Hebrew words it will take men and women who will shut down the heavens over darkness just by entering cities not by poster all of a sudden divination cannot work why because an individual aligned enough to host that level of god prophetically you have all of god but experientially he must be formed in you bit by bit bit by bit you can define your limit in the spirit but i'm challenging someone the destiny is waiting for you cannot be changed the way you are i know you have tried but at the level you give prophecy no nation will be blessed your prophecy has not left individuals to nations there is still room for building this is a, a shake up and a wake up there are still people in our families as anointed as we are darkness is still looming around them that's a sign that you are not refined enough are we together you are doing well as a pastor but you know there is still witchcraft in your family you even acknowledge it so what is wrong with that light there is a way that light can be so bright you will catch a revelation that will make you travel home you will say i'm here just for one day shut the door everybody shut the door i found something no shut the door you shut the door and in two hours people drive to your house saying i'm sorry it's me that tied everybody down it's, it's not my fault and it's, oh, hold on 
I, I, I will you cross the gates of hell into pieces listen when John G Lake was alive he made Spokane the healthiest city in the whole world are we together EW Kenyon no man died less than 70 within his environment where have we gone to that we're making so much noise shouting shouting all sorts i am this i have sons five sons international ministry i went to ghana i went to london sit down you say come one quality of champions is they are never satisfied with where they are others are clapping for you if you join them to clap for yourself you are not wise let them do the clapping while you do the moving you continue to move lord i thank you for this dimension and this grace but then open more frontiers open more frontiers and all of a sudden a time will come they will say you are zeus or hermes they say this person pastor alpha is not a normal human being again what dimension is this what level of grace and unction is this i look at my life today people send me text messages all the time appreciating the grace of god and this is what most of them say thank you for paying the price whenever i get those things they really touch me do you know why because they make me know that if i continue see if you want to host this grace you better find a way of letting pain know that you are not giving up because of it this pain factor that has robbed us this pain factor this pain factor is too painful the training is too much you will never 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 enter the anointing that way pray in the night you are complaining one hour you are grumbling forget about power god is not a harpalist forget about power 30 minutes of praying in the spirit and you are talking no you can't carry power that way it takes a level of stamina 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 that defies the gates of darkness you must defy pain you must defy excessive food this eating like a fool that destroys people you are on a mission going somewhere if you cannot tame your stomach you can't tame any demon eat anything anyhow i'm a human being man must work look at that kind of thinking sleep if you don't conquer sleep you will never host this anointing no. this slumber and sluggishness and laziness you stand to pray 10 minutes you are snoring and sleeping you can gist and gossip for one day but to stand to do spiritual things and then the time for the word of god you open this bible you are yawning you better cast that devil it's a spirit you open the bible you are yawning cast it fast your life is under attack don't ever say it's all right i'm just tired listen men are not anointed by luck there is a price i'm i'm showing you a bit of my private life a bit of the price you see that that's the reason why when people go through this you talk about them even in the secret god punishes you in the open they have they have established an altar through the blood that comes out of them blood is a sacrifice hallelujah something came on me for you to please let's not play games with this thing if you are in it go for it go for it fast for it pray for it study for it sit down for it sit down for it don't rush anything i assure you one step in his approval will cover the grounds of 20 years there's nothing called wasted time with him please sit down you need to advise yourself tonight myself sit down myself sit down myself sit down myself sit ah you are papa thank god myself sit down you are mama you are 
deaconess, you are prophetess, you are apostle, you are this, myself, sit down. Then you will command levels of power and you will stand and watch what God is doing to you and you will say, my God, what is this? Please be seated in Jesus' name. If I had my way, we would just pray till the service is finished. Because when the water is, the Bible says you strike while the iron is hot. As it's hot like this, you strike it. Let everything that is not God fly out of that, that, that making. Let's touch on something tonight. But this message is really a message that struck hard. I believe there are specific people this word is for. God is asking you to wake up and Eli is asking you to go back to sleep. You have to choose who to believe. At your level you are anointed too much you know people send me all kinds of texts an apostle of uncommon grace and power i thank god for it but i just look at the text and i laugh do you know what uncommon grace and power is all these programs listen let me give you a frank advice program one program here one event here one crusade here one conference here you won't grow that way a, a conference is not you won't grow that way many of us are obsessed passionate you have a church of two members there are 10 crusades 10 conferences in one year what are you doing be honest with yourself nobody grows that way you sit down and you are sharpened and filed you know how a razor blade is when you buy a new razor blade you touch it on a paper Pia! that's how it goes that's what God is saying you see God lifting all these our people now worship team gradually gradually when, when they all come to me I tell them go and sit down because I'm the one supervising the sharpening by the spirit. You can feel sharp because you cut wood. But what you are going to be cutting are metals. Not woods. Metals. Metals. There are machines that ride through metals. There are machines that cut stones. Do you know the, the, the strength of those materials? You cut through those. Brah, just cut everything. There are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods. They will hook and the machine will stop turning. That's nonsense and inferior product. It's a sign that that was not a good product. But when you buy it, you buy something, it will cut through rocks and pieces them. That's what God is telling me to. By the time you stand, in all the millions you are looking for, you will be so valuable. Oh, at my age, I think I should have built a house. Don't worry. Just stay. Somebody will bring a car key bring a house key bring all kinds of things and give you be careful unhealthy comparison will destroy you we live in a world that is very carnal i teach you success principles we just finish success systems but be careful unhealthy comparison at my age i am 40 at my age i'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows okay sorry you don't have it now so what are you going to do about it I, I don't know but god must answer me in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars and houses you are in trouble though. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far god will help us 
shall abrand to kasiata katar in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part 1 in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of god's creation and when god i think uh, media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes god doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed it's a mystery I've said it. Many people would think it's witchcraft. If you see me in your dream, wake up and rejoice. Something serious happened to you. Hallelujah. You must have the arsenals. When you are discouraged, what do you have in your spiritual arsenal? Is there a message? Is there a tool? I tell you, woe to that person who has not programmed. You don't prepare for battle at the war front. You station them. There are tools. Whenever I feel that I'm losing spiritual favor, there are tools already. Ah, there are tools. There are tools. There are tools. God gave me tools. Tools. Whenever you feel you are lazy, that fasting grace is not there. I tell you one correct message. Listen to it in the night. Where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always god's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word, you're already in trouble. There should be a word for seasons in your life. There are times, honestly, you are discouraged. You need a word that lifts you. Everybody will not have your time. You must learn to have your own time. Get the word and sit down. Hear messages that build you. And all of a sudden, your faith rises. Hallelujah. Feel like praying no this thing is on me i feel like praying. i wish i were alone i feel like praying let me tell you how what to do whenever your spirit is stirred don't go to bed pray immediately make sure you can sleep pray but don't waste it there are times this kind of things happen to you alone you are listening to a message every time every time because the moment you feel it it's like a spiritual feeling station something is happening prayer is like opening the tank you see that you open the tank oh god feel me let that anointing come let that fire come and then it comes upon your spirit these are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong some of you after hearing this now you now relax back to carnality you see that carnality doesn't mean something evil you just come down to the, this is what it means to be in the spirit your spirit is alive ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will birth it out immediately hallelujah the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. Genesis 1 verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in number one, our image. Everybody say image. Number two, after our likeness. And then he says, let them, oh it's projected, have dominion. Please stop. The Bible says, let us make man in two. You 
using two dimensions the first is our image now until adam we know that already that they were already inhabitants upon the earth right other dispensations carried different kinds and types of humanoid species adam is not the first man are we together the first man who opened up our dispensation but there have been other humanoid species again and again upon the earth are we together now who had bodies bodies that were spiritual bodies that were not mortal bodies that were made out of different substances there were dispensations where the men that lived in those dispensations had bodies that were made of light quantized light there were dispensations where men had bodies that were made of other substances not earthly and not god's own kind of body they were heavenly body as we call it but then there was a grading of them according to different di dimensions are we together now but then when it came to the making of man listen all other species were made in the likeness of god but never in his image the image of god was what lucifer wanted lucifer was already in the likeness of god the likeness of god means god has two hands the bible doesn't tell us he has um the seven eyes and seven horns are just prophecies are we together now god has two legs he stands on one head there are creatures all kinds of things but i'm saying god as a person when jesus came the bible called him the full expression of the image of the christ so we see him carrying that form all other humanoid species were in the likeness of man of god but man was in the image the image of god is a spiritual quality right the the imprint of his person the very factor that makes god god is where you get the root word kabod glory the essence of god was vested in his image image so man was made this time around not just in the likeness of god but the image of god and then god told us straight up the purpose for making that man watch this he never said let them be preachers he never said let them be apostles please listen he never said let them be pastors he didn't say let them conduct koinonia are we together the mandate was let them have dominion write that word down dominion dominion is a language of governance it's a political language a language of governance dominion is a language of legislature legislature has to do with enacting or enforcing laws enacting birthing them or enforcing the ones that have already been passed dominion means to take charge take charge of a territory dominion means to take charge dominion talks of stewardship please write it down so let them take charge let them legislate let them govern let them have stewardship this is god's original idea a great mentor dr miles munro will tell you that's god's original idea now watch this in theology there's what we call the law of first use right the law of first use means that whenever you want to study the context of a word the first key is to go and find where it was first used the context upon which it was used is the anchor with which you will use to interpret every other appearance of it are we together if it veers off from the first context then you must use another strategy of interpreting it are we together now so the first time we see the word dominion it was attached to man the first time we see god making man he didn't sit down and rest later on and then he woke up and said man i don't know what to do with you okay let's try dominion have it and see he says let them have dominion dominion stewardship control redemption as we know was a veering off 
of the original plan please understand this everything from genesis 4 listen carefully everything from genesis 4 down up until acts chapter 1 was an extra curriculum added to it the original agenda of god had to do with dominion that's why i read for you revelations and genesis everything that is in between came as a remedy system are we together please you have to understand this god's original idea was not to have the fivefold ministry god's original idea was not to have churches uh -uh. god's original idea is not to have crusades god's original idea was not to have altar calls god's original idea was not to have healing services all of those things were predicated upon something that happened we call it the fall of man man's use of his will to defy god's will in rebellion led to other provisions so everything from genesis chapter 4 the law and and the annals of the kings and everything that happened down they were of course there were adumbrations but immediately from that time it was a system to be able to get man to qualify back to carry out the dominion mandate listen the dominion mandate was and is still god's desire and intent for man now many believers do not know this we come around church activities which is good we come around spiritual growth which is good we even come around going to heaven which is not a bad idea the bible says it so we believe it but much more than going to heaven are we together now much more than all of these things oh i'm looking forward to my jesus coming someday the bible says to look forward to his appearance however god's original idea for you was not heaven god's original idea for you was earth it is still earth it will always be earth his plans can change but his purposes are eternal are we learning something so imagine for instance um can i use you come my goal for this gentleman everybody watch this my goal for this gentleman is to go and carry that water you see that water that's what i want to carry so at the beginning of the journey i have stated the end from the beginning because that's the character of god he reveals the end from the beginning then you start leaving that script now this guy starting his journey something happens are we together let's assume that he injures himself through whatever it is now i temporarily suspend i suspend this agenda of him getting there to treat something that went wrong with him are we together that is everything that came from the law until jesus it was a fair enough of the original manuscript to be able to bring man back to the position now when you come back to that position and it so happens that this time around it must be in christ listen so when you now come back to that position you are supposed to continue that agenda but when you get distracted and you now forget about the agenda and you are doing other things the one who sent you will never have fulfillment and satisfaction are we together the bible says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof thank you so there are many people doing several things just, just come down with this for a moment i want everybody to hear me everybody say marriage shout it marriage. say employment shout it say promotion say houses say cars say long life divine health bungalow just say everything i say duplex jeep prosperity hold on all those things are requirements that help us back so that we can continue this agenda in themselves they are useless as far as god's eternal counsel is concerned 
their usefulness only comes in in how they help you align to fulfill this are we together so marriage on its own is useless to you if it cannot find a bearing to this car jeep on its own is useless to you until it finds a bearing let me tell you one of the most useless ways of living on earth is not to have the dominion mandate at work in your life is not to have the consciousness of God's kingdom agenda yet you are achieving things so at the end of it like the rich fool you gather money oh I made wise financial decisions and God looks at you have you read in the Bible that our works will be tried with fire what do you think will be the basis that means there are people that you will see like a heap and fire will pass <laughs> And at the end of it, what will be there will not be up to my hand. They will be gauged with respect to their nearness to this agenda. Stewardship of earth. Kingdom advancement, we call it. Please, you must understand this. If you don't understand this, you will never be an effective Christian. We have been so distracted. We have veered off this. Prosperity teaching without a kingdom understanding will lead people to carnality and useless living are we together teaching people to wear nice clothes wear these and people claim cars and claim all of this all those things are only useful to the degree to which so we have a church that is full of largely carnal and lost driven people not because the object of their desire is wrong in itself but it has no kingdom bearing are we together so someone looks at a jeep just pass and say hey i claim it and god says okay with respect to what i said god just leave me i claim it i shall claim it there are ways you can know immature believers and there are ways you can know that they have not been trained well let me tell you how to measure growth in the spirit when a man's life has been aligned to the purposes of the kingdom and everything that proceeds from him with respect to his desires are only there to create a platform for this dominion mandate that person is a mature believer are we together if i ask you what are your concerns now Many of us will lift our hands and say, money, money, sir. Direct money. Just money. Naira, like that. Pounds, dollars, money. Another person will say, child, child. This my womb must carry a child. You ask the person, why are you so desperate for a child? You know what the person is going to say? Largely, all the people who married uh, uh, what, around my, my time have children. Some have two, some have five, some have ten. I'm alone. And that's the reason why the person wants a child. Are we together? Ask someone, why are you going to school? Say, are you joking? You want me to be hungry, Abby? Okay, if you are full, what is it for? Say, well, I'm for everybody is like that. I need to get a good job. Then another person says, I'm not getting a good job. I'm a businessman because he went to one seminar. Both of them are useless as far as the kingdom is concerned. If you cannot state bringing your strong reason, let me tell you a chip. You've heard me preach this again and again. The dominion mandate remains God's desire. And anybody who plunges into that agenda has commanded both the hand and the heart of God. Both the hand and the heart of God. Supplies don't just follow your needs. They follow your pursuit of the dominion mandate prosperity long life healing all of these things pursue you when you pursue this jesus said it this way 633 matthew but seek first the kingdom kingdom he did say seek first heaven the kingdom is not heaven seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then he says in doing so all other things shall be added unto you are we together it is God's desire that we reign in life and look at me the concept of reigning in life 
has nothing to do with usurping authority over people. Please give us Genesis 1.26 again. God meticulously listed everything he wanted us to have dominion over. Let's look at it, please. One twenty-six. Let's hurry up. Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Read on now. Over what? The fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. Over the cattle. Over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Notice that man was not mentioned. The dominion mandate is not usurping authority and control over men. When you do that, it's called witchcraft, it's called manipulation, it's an attitude of the Antichrist. Every government that oppressed people had a revolt historically. At a point in time, the people were angry. You know why? There's chaos and anarchy because people were not designed to be dominated. They were designed to be led. They were not designed to be ruled. When in Bible days, when God wanted to punish either his people or your enemies, he gave you authority to treat them like animals. So he would cause them to become slaves. He would cause them to become servants. He would cause them to serve you. Not like a man serving somebody he loves. Subject them to slavery. Slavery had always been a way of God communicating his dissatisfaction. Either with his people or people who made themselves his enemies. Listen. The moment you find out an appetite to rule over men. I don't mean lead men. Rule over men is the spirit of the Antichrist. There is a programming that has come from Babylon that is at work in your life. Unfortunately, this system that we live in has designed people to live that way. Right from primary school. They clap for you and give you an award for taking first. Now, the idea is not whether you did well or not. The idea is that you beat other people. So they clap for you in their presence. Now their humiliation becomes your trophy. Are we together? As you hold that award and look at your closest rival and smile in victory and watch the pain of the person. You see footballers, when they win, Arsenal, Man U, the ones who win flaunt the cup and you see the other people crying. And that cry is the joy and the triumph of the people. It's an antichrist system. Now, of course, we use it all the time. Some of you have schools. Use it. The Lord help you. But um, we are examining the word. It's not supposed to be that way. So, now you find out that students from primary school, secondary school, their agenda is not to do well. Their agenda is to beat others. They clap for you with respect to how you trample others. That's why malpractice comes in. It's an effort to force your way to the top, whether you are ready or not. So, you manipulate ways. They even name generators. I pass my. You see where those revelations came from? They look very subtle, but they are devilish understandings sponsored by Babylon. What is your neighbor's. Um, 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 what is the issue with your neighbor and your life? No. I pass my neighbor. So you now compare yourself on healthy competition. Every time men try to usurp authority over men it's now going to be survival of the fittest. Whoever can oppress someone. Are we together? But God's idea is to lead men, not oppress them. In fact, they asked Jesus this question. Who will be the greatest? You see the disciples? Greatest, greatest. Not who will be great. Who will be the greatest, the chiefest of all? And Jesus looked at them. And then he said, the the Pharisees and all of this use that method of leadership. He said, but it should not be among you. Whoever wants to be great must be your minister, your servant. That the way up is to serve people, not truncate them. This is a good message for a pastor's conference because we live in a time where men of God in the name of spiritual authority, I believe in authority, have pocketed the destinies of other people 
Some of you here are victims of this and you need deliverance fast. Where a man of God takes your destiny and puts it in his pocket. He may be well-meaning, but he or she was also indoctrinated into that understanding. And they make it look like you leave me, you die. If I ask for money, you don't ask questions. If I come to your house and say rice, you say yes sir. Beans, yes sir. Everything, yes sir. And they use scripture and threaten people. It is antichrist. The moment you find out that you are forcing people to respond to you outside of their will, you are subscribing to another system. It is not of God. What of workers in the house of God? You, you must be a worker. What of partners? You, promise. This is your suit. You are going to start sewing 50,000. And the guy says, how about, mm, I'm, I'm your boss in office. I know how much I'm paying you, 50,000. That thing looks nice. It is not God's way. Hello? I know you don't like what I'm saying. We are teaching on the dominion mandate. Many of the chaos and the anarchy that we have around our society, that passion to oppress people, that passion to leave people bankrupt of information because knowledge gives light. Is that true? That's why many times they do not want people to be educated because when they are enlightened, they can know their rights and they can stand up. So they keep people in ignorance. There are systems and nations that the strength of that oppression is hinged upon the lack of orientation of the people. Then we have carved out a name. We call them masses. Masses. And then all kinds of sociologists began to come up with their their postulations to call religion the opium of the masses people like Karl Marx and the rest came up with all kinds of things it was smart you're a sociologist answer it but oh, that is junk I'm sure wherever he is now he has known the truth listen let me tell you you see the Holy Spirit is the oldest authorized spiritual entity on earth today he's worth your trust are we together? Everything started in his presence till now. The dominion mandate is not about usurping authority over people. Listen, the dominion mandate is not about outshining people. The dominion mandate is not outshining pastors, outshining men of God. I have larger crowds than you. That means we are taking over. The concept of takeover must be well defined. Because for many people, takeover means to come and push you. You had a small church. We came and within one year, we are the ones in Zaria. We are taking over. We have to be careful. Because most of what we call kingdom advancement is not only sheep stealing, it's sheep killing, sheep destruction, and so on and so forth. Let me clarify for us what the dominion mandate is. It has nothing to do with outshining people. It has nothing to do with competition. No. It has everything to do with the governance of the earth. It has everything to do with the stewardship of God's system. To the end that the fullness of his glory, kabod, his essence, his lifestyle would find expression in the earth. John uh, Matthew chapter 6, we we'll read from verse um, 9 and 10. Jesus is teaching us how to pray and then he tries to instill in us a dominion and kingdom paradigm and he says, give us Matthew chapter yes, he says, after this manner therefore pray, our father which art in heaven, we hallow or we revere your name. Then verse 10 says, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come your agenda that domain you have carved out for us we want your influence the word kingdom is a combination of two words a king's domain dominion the sphere where the dominion of a king finds expression kingdom are we together now so god's prayer for us is that we pray that on this side of his kingdom that the reality of our stewardship the reality of the purposes of God be established across the earth the same way it is done in heaven it has nothing to do with ministry it has nothing to do with usurping men ministry prosperity are only tools to help us say prosperity 
is only a tool divine health is only a tool so you see when you have these things the dominion mandate consumes you they will never steal away god from your life that was the mistake of the rich fool he thought life was only about making money when he now made money and built bands he secured himself hear what he told himself my soul find rest in other words i have come to the end of my pursuit nothing else to be done and god says no this is a rich fool tonight because you are useless as far as my agenda is concerned tonight this night your soul is required of you what is the key to carrying out the dominion mandate the next teachings i'm going to be teaching us the different dimensions of the dominion mandate but what is the key the key is in romans chapter 5 and verse 17 another scripture that has not been properly understood by many romans chapter 5 verse 17 let's see where god will help us tonight it says for if by one man's offense that one man now um death reigned by one adam the first adam right adam the husband of eve for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more listen they that receive two things what's number one abundance of take note of that number two and of the gift of righteousness these are the two requirements to be able to execute the dominion mandate effectively number one the gift of righteousness the bible did not put them in the order they should come it just gave you information the first thing you need to be able to carry out the dominion mandate effectively that mandate of exercising god's sovereign control on earth is the ability to be a possessor of what the bible calls the gift of righteousness then number two abundance abundance of grace the bible says whoever is a possessor of these two realities can reign effectively in the earth reigning in the earth is not just you see dominion there are different aspects of dominion i'll be teaching us in other series there are dimensions of dominion authority and the ability to legislate is only one of the dimensions that's not all there is to dominion creativity you see that authority has to do with legislature through your words through decrees creativity has to do with legislature influence through your seeds through your ideas right there are many dimensions i'll be teaching you so executing authority the capacity to speak and have things happen is only one of the dimensions of dominion unfortunately many people come around here and they feel because i speak and some things happen i'm walking in dominion You'll be very blessed by this series it will help you to reset what you call christianity so that you will arrange things accordingly and know what your ultimate pursuit should be because there's confusion in the body of christ for many like we always teach and well-meaning and innocently the goal is heaven and that's not a lie but the bible never teaches going to heaven as the end of all things it's not in the bible i'm a christian are we together I believe in heaven but that's that's not it you read your bible the bible talks about this old earth and the whole heavens passing away a new earth coming and god living where he is i told you heaven listen heaven was never initially god's throne there is there was a day that there was no heaven yet god was alive and was existing the bible says he dwells in unapproachable light he created heaven and put his throne there and that's why he say heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool he's going to move that throne now to the earth so god did not used to live in heaven no he created heaven for reasons that we are going to find out the bible as we know has not revealed to us clearly these are some of the hidden mysteries that eating of the tree of life will supply us when we get to the new jerusalem that's why our knowledge will still be unfolding 
Are we together now? We are going to find out because there certainly was a reason why the heavens and the earth were created. Genesis 1 verse 1. They were not just created just because of Adam. Uh -uh. They were fixed back because of Adam. God's original idea, listen carefully, with respect to making heavens in the beginning and the earth, what we even call the dominion mandate given to our dispensation is a subset of that ultimate agenda. We will find out. Revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation. Are you blessed? That means there are many things we are going to find out. Let me give you a few information. Should I say this? Hmm. Some of the spirit beings that we generically call angels were once inhabitants in the earth. They had their dispensation. Are we together? And the same way we have what we call judgment day and rapture. A similitude of that event happened to them. They now are still excelling in light growing. And they have been authorized together with the angels to come and serve the saints and help us complete this dispensation. Angels are not the only spirit beings in the realm of the spirit. Anytime you see any other thing that is not God and it's not the four living creatures, we just say they are angels. In a sense, we are right. The word is angelio, a messenger. They are always sent ones from the throne. But in terms of classification and configuration, no, angels are not the only spirit beings that are sent on errand. Read your Bible, Mount Zion. There are many inhabitants there. There are spirits of just men made perfect correct there are innumerable company of angels there are all kinds of things that happen there in that atmosphere of mount zion am i boring you are you learning something when we know this you see even the things we call rema are only relative because they are not strange to the realm of the spirit they are only coming to us newly demons know some of these things i tell you theologically speaking you see when these spirits came you, you know the bible talks about those we call the nephilims and other kinds of giants who the bible says were a product of these spirit beings the bible calls them sons of god is that true sons of god who slept with the daughters of men and gave birth to people who were half men and half spirit entities like oak the king of bashan goliath of god and many other people who appeared we see that they were superhuman some of them had six fingers six toes it was some of this interaction with these spirit beings that also taught women what we call the mystery of seduction all of these things were part of the doctrines is what paul together calls the doctrines of demons are we together now it was some of the propositions that these spirit beings brought to the daughters of men that made them to like them and even allow them to have children with them. That's, that's another separate lecture again. But just for you to know and to understand that a lot has happened in this earth. And if we do not stay fixed upon what authorized our being here, we will live very useless lives as a church and as individuals. Say amen. This teaching will give meaning to your prosperity. This teaching will give meaning to your fasting and prayer. Do you know why many people get born again and stop there? Have you seen people that when you tell them, oh, I'm praying, I'm on a program, I'm on a this and that, they look at you and say, what, that's a waste because they do not understand this. So for them, the entire scope of their theology is escapism from hell. And then you stand and continue to manage your life through repeated repentance until rapture comes. The day you hear that trumpet, do anything you want, you are safe. You see the theology? That's a torturous and frustrating theology. Jesus said, occupy till I come. The word occupy does not mean build houses. Advance with those influence until I come. There's something we are missing. That's why our young ones are not interested in God again. Because our marketing of what we give them as Christianity is ugly and unattractive. So you see a young child of 12 years and now put stringent rules around that child. And then you tell the child, be born again. 
Then the child is born again and says, okay, daddy, what next? He says, are you asking me? Let's go to church. And he says, daddy, I'm going to church every Sunday. Now you say I should add Wednesday. He says, oh yeah, join baptismal class. I see that you are too idle. Then the guy joins a baptismal class. Then they teach him the doctrines of the denomination. Then the day for water baptism comes. They baptize him, give him a, an English name and hand over a certificate. And then the child says, okay, what do I do again? He says, just continue coming to church. And he says, no, no, no. Let me, what is all this? I cannot just continue coming to church. Daddy, I think I have grace to dance. If I see you dancing in my house, I will kill you by myself. My child, dance? Okay, daddy, I have the grace to paint. Paint for what? Serve God. So they have taught you, painting and serving God are not the same. And you leave painting. And you leave this. Daddy, I think I have a passion about broken marriages. Say, don't be stupid. Concentrate and grow spiritually. Jesus is coming very soon. Now, that's a very innocent doctrine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being sarcastic. But that thing, many of you seated looking at me now, is one of the reasons why you left the things of God. Because you couldn't under... There was no logic to it. Someone comes from being a Muslim and then becomes a child of God, maybe a Christian and all of that, and you sit the person down and the person now says, okay, I have escaped this. I'm a child of God. Say, so what do I do now? Become a worker in church. Then the person is a worker in church and then one day the person says, honestly, I don't know what, what is going on here. What is the meaning of this? Where are we going? Just say, don't worry, oh, this thing, there's a reward. And the person is saying, I don't understand. Then others have said no god could not keep us like this let's add flavor to it then they swung to the other side of the pendulum and the church has become a place of just fun and laughter and say let's just enjoy ourselves and they say we are occupying you are not occupying that's laziness and idleness are we together so we have all just fun and play around play and play and joke and take the church of God to become like a museum or an amusement park no both are wrong let me tell you when you know the dominion mandate you will be so busy you will not even you will think age is not on your side you see people wake up in the morning with a sense of urgency they, they are, the issue of heaven is settled see let me tell you um, we are going, I hope that one of this series will look at redemption and I am going to be showing you that the issue of heaven is not is not supposed to be a frightful thing are we together the issue of heaven is like an admission letter into a university when you have an admission letter it is possible to lose the admission letter but you cannot be in 200 level and all you are thinking about is your admission letter no you have lectures is that true you are looking at something else imagine a student in 300 level and he's moving where's my admission letter and he opens the box and sees it and keeps it and says, ah thank you jesus that's what we do with this rapture heaven thing i'm not against it you know me i love people i love souls but having that kind of mindset will never help you to be effective that's why we don't treasure creativity that's why we don't treasure dominion why because we think the most important thing is let me just be careful god can come any day and any time let him just come and find me your your being fit going to heaven listen going to heaven has never been something that a man did for himself by qualification you have to understand this the part where you get that you merit is the reward of crowns is based on your works utilizing the grace that was supplied for you and the degree to which you advance the kingdom to it with it will determine your reward we will not get the same rewards when a child is born we say he came from where please help me <laughs> now that child is now afraid to go back uh, okay, let me not let's let's not talk about this thing i don't want to make us feel very bad I need to clarify a lot of things. I hope that God will grant me grace to teach it. The book of life, rapture, heaven, the conditions for heaven, and all of that. Because you see, the Bible lets us know clearly that what the Bible calls, what we have called the judgment day, is a season of reward for the saints. The Bible clearly lists those who will be punished, who should be afraid. Why should I be in Christ? 
Why should I be walking with God and my life is perpetually a subject of fear? Fear. Those things look nice. You know, sometimes you have to shake people a little bit to get serious with their lives. But it's impossible to serve God that way. There was a time I think there was a propaganda. There have been many about the coming of Christ. And people till today, people still come up with visions. I saw that Jesus Christ is coming in August 24th. And you see people, people sold their houses, land that they would have been rich now. Their children are suffering. Foolish people made stupid business decisions, gave away land. You know, people shaved their head. They were waiting and all, and, and, and all of that. And nothing really happened. God does not teach us to wait for him this way. The Bible already tells us that the coming of Christ will be like the days of Noah. Let me tell you. Let me, I'm sharing with you the dominion mandate. The coming of Christ will not take believers unaware. Did you hear what I said? The coming of Christ, I repeat, will not take believers unaware. Please give me 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We are reading 1 to 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Is God helping us? We are going to find someone and pray tonight. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But of the times, please look up. Whether you are inside, outside, I want us to read it together. Okay, I'll read it. I'll tell you where to join. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. So he's talking to who? Brethren, the church. Is that true? Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Many theologians, well-meaning, stop here. And they keep telling people, he's coming like a thief in the night. And coming like a... The Bible did not stop here. It was Paul himself who had his revelation, uh, his knowledge of the mystery by revelation. Are we together? Verse 3. For when they shall say, those who are without when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they 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 shall not escape if you're a child of god read the next verse with all your heart one two give us verse four please quickly one two read One more time. So if that day overtakes you, what is the sign that you are in darkness? Is that true? The Bible says we are the light of the world. Is that true? It says, but ye brethren... I'm speaking to you of the times and the seasons and I am telling you that it will be in the similitude of the day of Noah. That day, look at it, it's in your Bible. I didn't write this. That day will not overtake you as a thief. Why? Because the spirit of God is in us. There is a salt covenant. We are joined. He that is joined to Christ is one spirit. Are we together? You can never serve God when you live in fear of rapture and fear of heaven and fear of hell. Growing up, there used to be a word that the old folks used to use. Assurance of not salvation. Assurance of salvation. Assurance of admission letter. Assurance of job. That's why every time they give you a job, they give you a little paper is a token to prove to you that you are there. The Bible says God gave us his spirit as a proof, as a seal of our redemption, as a proof that we are now the begotten of him, that he's no longer the firstborn, um, the only begotten. He's now the first begotten of we, the brethren. Are we together now? So that God is not ashamed. He's not ashamed to call us brethren. But has given us the same spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It doesn't mean people don't backslide. It doesn't mean people don't derail. But I want you to know this. 
there is a way we have been teaching i'm showing you the things that have occupied us so that we do not focus on the dominion mandate 80 percent of the church is occupied by just preparing themselves for rapture and i'm not against books i know that there are books that have been written there are encounter am i boring you this is a foundation because several of us are living in fear you don't even know what to believe you are afraid you are sitting you are standing and you are wondering and they tell you if god comes and just when you are you know maybe shouting at somebody that's the end of it if he comes to meet you shouting you see that and so we walk in all kinds of fear even when we go before god there is no confidence in approaching him. I believe in repentance. You know me. I always balance things. It's foolishness that makes people to just swing the other side and don't coordinate it. There are spiritual coordinates that guide our dispensing of the truth. When you swing things in either side and they are not regulated by the word, it will still lead to error. I believe in repentance. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There were two men hanging on the cross. Two of them were thieves, true or false. A thief is somebody who stole something and they caught him. Those ones now. Is that true? They were hanging on the cross. And one was quarreling Jesus. Look, Jesus, you are this and nice of you to help us kill these people and let's escape and go on. You see, there was no repentance in his heart. The other person turned and said, Ah, this guy is undeserving. We deserve this thing. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day you will be with me in paradise. This day. Why? For believing me. For believing me. For believing my innocence whatever gave you that revelation must be sponsored by the spirit of god because no man can say jesus is lord except by the spirit to say jesus is lord does not mean j-e-s-u-s-i-s-l-o-r-d no that's not it the lordship of jesus is declared by revelation our announcing it is simply a product of it's not the reason no that's why the bible says in acts chapter 10 while they yet, peter yet spake the holy ghost fell on them There are so many things in my spirit. We have to free ourselves. The average Christian that we see walking around does not exactly know what he should do for God. Even what we, when we talk about purpose, most people think purpose is just for graduates. You are a graduate, your purpose is whatever you studied, do something with it, get married, train your children and give some money to the church and God will help you. That is a fruitless life. It truly is a fruitless life. The dominion mandate has been corrupted by an exaggerated fear of hellfire, fear of heaven, fear of rapture. And there are books that keep coming. Every time you go online and just Google it, some of you, oh, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw rapture. It may not be a lie. The impact of revelations can cause you to be biased if the holy spirit does not balance you you can be caught up in an event and see the rapture happen and the catastrophe that happened and if god does not give you balance you can return back to earth and start harassing everybody brother be prepared i'm late for work i'm telling you that jesus is coming and you know and all and will make people feel guilty and pastors sometimes we are gullible because there are members that bully us i want to come and teach a series i had a seven days revelation about rapture i need to come and teach people and they come and stand and at the end of that teaching you wonder whether god is really love there are those who have seen every pastor in hell listen to my message revelation and uh, what was it called reality of heaven and hell there are people who have seen satan found out that this is a very useful tool so those who started having these experiences satan can appear as an angel of light are we learning he now began to open people through experiences it is true that they left it it is true that they were somewhere it is true that they saw tears similitudes and they returned back to destroy people let me tell you something 
this issue of rapture and heaven and hell has caused more fear and uncertainty to the extent that pastors who love God and have served in the vineyard for years cannot stand today. If I say it right now, if you know you are going to heaven, don't stand up. But if I say stand up, some of you will just stand up so that you are not embarrassed. So that if somebody will say, we are praying together, you mean you don't even know where you are going. You are not my friend again. But the truth is many people don't know. For many people, this is our theology. Let's just keep watching. The day the trumpet sounds, if I make it glory to be, to be to Jesus. No. So we preoccupy our minds and never do anything. Are we together? We never do anything. It has made many fathers irresponsible in the name of being evangelists or missionaries. Ah, I need, there's an urgency in my spirit. I need to preach the gospel. Jesus can come, you know, any day, any time. Honey, there is no food. That's not the issue. Let's just pay the price. God knows when he comes, he will reward us. And the wife is saying, what are you saying? There's no food in the house. Nothing is happening. And at the end of it, the man will run and leave them and call the woman a witch. Call the children he gave birth to the five children witches. Leave the children to roam around like prostitutes and say, I'm going to the mission field. And then an unbeliever will meet them and train them and convert them. You see what is happening all around? Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. There has never been any stadium-like crusade with any evangelism. But you are using an aberration of the dominion mandate. Occupy structures, systems, everywhere until I come. Listen, brothers and sisters. If we do not get this straight, we are going to live very useless lives. The most heat of this tragedy is the north northern christians are the most dominion mandate non-compliant you know why because the christianity we received in the north was purely evangelical are we together and which was correct but i'm saying that the imbalance there is that because of the urgency of things like persecution and so on and so forth people now were indoctrinated into not being serious with things like their lives their families it's in the north you can see one man with five six children staying in a small room and he tells you look what is the use of building a house I saw a vision and I know that when Jesus comes, call me Banzane. You hear them say it. And they, they threaten your visionary attitude. Oh, I want to build a house. I want to do this. All those things are useless. When the the motto, when the buy the motto, yes, you also call me Banzane. And then we say those things. They look very nice. They look appealing. And they are responsible for the pain that many families, the pain that many churches, the pain and the decadence that happens in the society. Nobody takes responsibility over anything because we are saying, after all, Jesus is coming. The concept of Jesus is coming is not a concept that should stimulate indiscipline and unseriousness. Jesus is coming should ginger us to occupy that he comes to meet us as a, uh, as a faithful servant. This mistake was adumbrated in Matthew 25. He gave unto one five talents. He gave unto one two. He gave unto the other one. The one with one talent is doing what we are doing. I know he's coming soon. There's no need wasting my time. When will I go and do business with this money? And he buried it. When Jesus came, he was prepared, waiting for his arrival. Whereas the rest were there trying to bring interest for the master. Are we together now? And then when he came, he now said, you, you are a hard man. You have been threatening me. I can't wait to give you this, your coin. Carry this, your nonsense and leave. What did Jesus call him? Wicked one, two. Um, profitable servant and those who spend their time multiplying it listen to what he told them he said well done good and faithful servant one of the synoptics says i appoint to you kingdoms that's the reward are we together jesus is coming soon 
should never threaten the dominion mandate the consciousness of rapture should never threaten the dominion mandate the consciousness of hell should never threaten the dominion mandate the dominion mandate is not an antichrist mandate hey look at me church the dominion mandate is not a mandate for ambitious people most people preach that the, the dominion mandate is for pentecostals so whenever we are talking about advancing the kingdom they look at great people like our fathers bishop Oedeko and the rest and say these people are just carnal all they are thinking about is university jesus is coming soon all they are thinking about is empowering people prosperity all this money money thing and you see bloggers writing in ignorance we made that mistake and now we are about losing almost all our missionary secondary schools because the missionaries that came and other orthodox ministries like catholic equa you know and all of that they built schools is that true they built hospitals that, that was a, a mindset of the dominion mandate Adv they permeated lands because of the medical aid they could bring to people so although they did not like their gospel they still gave them land and gave them space today we are losing this and there are no good schools again you cannot trust a school where your child will be trained properly the mission schools no longer have money and support you know why because those to support them said no we are closer to rapture there is no need supporting you let us just wait jesus is coming many of us here are already having that mindset it must change tonight being rapture compliant is not running away from responsibility and sitting down to say oh let me make sure i don't talk no he comes to meet you like that he calls you an unprofitable servant are we blessed we are going to pray i wish i had time we will continue next week the gift of righteousness righteousness like kenyon would say um, would define he calls it the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of inferiority and condemnation as i've learned about righteousness i found out is deeper than that revelation is progressive you know that kenyon died long ago are we together if kenyon were still alive he would have upgraded a lot of things righteousness is not just the ability to stand before the father righteousness is the very nature of god god's nature are we together not just doing right God's nature, his rightness before the Father is what was imparted upon us. Listen, there is nobody who is qualified to execute the dominion mandate if you do not carry the righteousness of God. The Bible calls us now the righteousness of God. That's why he calls it a gift. Everybody say it is a gift. Say it again, it's a gift. Now every gift God gives you, you use those gifts to produce fruits. Read the Bible. Gifts go with fruits. Gifts, fruits gift fruit the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit the gift of the spirit is god's benevolence to you the fruit of the spirit is a product of your own alignment it is your own participation in the equation there is the gift of righteousness there is the fruit of righteousness the outworkings of righteousness hallelujah listen the first thing any believer needs is to possess the gift of righteousness it is only the gift of righteousness that authorizes the holy spirit to come upon you listen you cannot have the holy spirit without the gift of righteousness it's impossible there are progressions the first thing that must happen to a man to be able to reign in life is to be born of a woman you have to be born of a woman that's what authorizes you to wear a body the second thing that must happen to you is rebirth regeneration from the word regime please make sure you're writing this down the first thing that must happen to you is your natural birth everyone born of a woman comes with the nature of the first Adam the fallen nature the nature of the first Adam is the nature that is corrupted is the nature that is called sin sin is not just something you do sin is a nature that comes to every man he said in sin did my mother conceive me the true concept of sin is not the things that are done 
the true concept of sin is a nature that is inherent in you that compels you to be a slave to it and then execute a lot of things so the first thing that must happen to any man is birth the second is rebirth 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 what is rebirth an impartation of the nature and the image of Christ in that man hallelujah these are realities of redemption that we must know in order to execute the dominion mandate the Bible says this let me tell you what the Bible says we're rounding up give give me please give me first Peter chapter 1 verse 23 I think 22 23 first Peter chapter 1 22 23 um, I'm looking for one I'm, I'm sure it's one of those verses first Peter being born again being born again everybody listen this born again thing is a big deal being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abided forever being born again or being saved as we call it is not just some oh god oh god i give you my heart i give you my heart i am your child i am your child amen amen and they say congratulations you are now a child of god take a little hamper a little tape in it and a little biscuit and you are no 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 that, that's not it at all being born again is a supernatural event listen that's why you must make sure everyone around you has that experience it is the condition to fulfill the dominion mandate the Bible says that only those who have received the gift of righteousness and then the abundance of grace shall by that one man, that mediator of the new covenant, Jesus himself. The foundation of our work in the kingdom, the foundation of the restructuring for the dominion mandate starts with Jesus. The pattern man, the portrait, Jesus himself. The Bible says looking up to him, he is the epicenter of this dominion mandate he is the epicenter of the entire life of the believer whenever we talk kingdom whenever we talk of anything the epicenter of what we call the faith life now is jesus you begin to trace your compass from him whenever you draw any bearing outside of the christ that whatever it is that you are constructing is already in error christ is the standard we start with him and we begin to navigate our path through this kingdom life it starts in christ that's why the bible says the first qualification is a regeneration comes from the word regen because every man born of a woman is carrying a spiritual gene of the first adam the fallen nature you do not have to commit any physical sin anyone who is not a possessor of righteousness cannot be in heaven cannot be in heaven the only not exception to this that i've seen from bible are babies why because their wills have not been developed for them to make a choice that's why there are no babies in hell whoever has a vision with babies in hell did not go to hell he went somewhere else are we together now yes The gift of righteousness do you have that gift it's a gift it's a gift pastor i give you a gift as with any gift it must be received that is a gift you receive it you can receive it this is the foundation i give it to you you receive it i give you can reject it that's why the bible says as many as received him gave he them the power to become to become to become the power to become so when you receive him the power to become is given to you they that are possessors so when you have received Christ by faith truly in your heart you can dare to say together with all the saints that I am part of the brethren I have a right to call Abba father I have a right to call Abba Father. He is not just your father. He is not just the God of Joshua Selman. That's a different dimension. He is now our father. That's why Paul can say about the family in heaven and on earth. We are now one big family. Under the same Lord. Under the same faith. Under the same baptism. Paul was teaching. There is one Lord. 
there is one faith there is one baptism we have been immersed into the same experience the foundation please hear me is not impartation impartation cannot give you the gift of righteousness healing cannot give you the gift of righteousness teaching all the principles that i teach you on success and all of that as important as they are they cannot give you the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness is freely given the custodian the authorized entity that can guarantee its release to you is jesus the christ his office is exclusively responsible for handling eternal life handling the gift of righteousness the holy spirit is only an enforcer he comes with respect in honor to your believing jesus you don't believe the holy spirit and receive the gift of righteousness no you don't believe the father and receive the gift of righteousness the same way it is not the vc signature that is on your admission letter it is the registrar but it's not the highest authority it is his office is that true so the office of the christ is responsible for allocating this when you stand and believe his report that message the reward for believing it is that the christ authorizes the spirit of god to come to you so when you come out for an altar call you don't know how supernatural what it is you are doing you don't feel anything physically you stand and heaven is watching the sun is watching lord jesus i believe in this i believe in that and while you are saying it jesus vets the sincerity of your confession and on grounds of that truth the spirit of god comes into your life representing eternal life and in that instant whether you feel clean or not the bible tells us like joshua the high priest in zechariah that that gift of righteousness is given to you the gift of righteousness is your past is your qualification it opens you up to the potentials of manifesting this dominion mandate the other dimension we'll look at is in subsequent series the abundance of grace abundance on grace another word is grace upon grace because there is saving grace that is a seed given to you as god's benevolence but it does not stop there that grace is nurtured through knowledge and understanding grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace becomes abundant as you access knowledge so in other words there are two things that you must possess the gift of righteousness and access to knowledge access to knowledge that grants you the privilege to be able to reign God is counting on us to fulfill this mandate God is counting on us when that rebirth happens to us as believers what then is the next step the next step after rebirth is discipleship write the word down we have abused that word discipleship discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's code of operation discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's belief system discipleship is the system where believers are trained to reign what is happening right now in koinonia is discipleship the word has become so ugly most people don't even want to hear it because for many people discipleship means under some kind of stringent religious system submitting under all sorts of things no we need discipleship it is God's system where ordinary believers are now trained on the matters of the kingdom trained to understand the precepts of, of the kingdom and this is why God gave apostles this is why God gave prophets listen this is why God gave evangelists are you seeing where we now come into the equation we were never there from beginning the apostolic ministry the prophetic ministry as we know it now is not an eternal ministry they are not eternal no Jesus 
is not in heaven today just as our apostle no when he sat upon that throne we still call him the apostle of our faith but his ministry now number one is lord number two is an as an intercessor the bible says he makes intercession for the saints even if i prophesy the bible says it will end is that true even prophecies will end even tongues will end so a day will come when god will look at us and say pastor alpha come well done good and faithful servant i put you over destiny makers international and you walked with them you did a great job i see the devils that you casted i see the sick bodies you have done well well done enter into the rest there is a new assignment that is going to be given to you a day will come god will look at me and say apostle oh joshua selma he won't call me apostle <laughs> whatever he calls me he's right <laughs> hallelujah and then he will congratulate me and say well done for the labor they laughed at you but you continued you served and when they are doing it some of you who laughed at me will be watching that will be such a gallant ceremony this is what will happen in heaven and while that handshake is going on well done good and faithful servant we are smiling in glory and rejoicing we have conquered life we occupied well till he came and he says because of the tv station you people set up we have here in the record in heaven over one billion souls came because of this television ministry ah. surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus you know that song i can only imagine some of you let me tell you what will happen in heaven you will stand you are happy you got there but you will be ashamed i hope you know there's shame in heaven oh yes go and read your bible there is you stand no souls no partnership no blessing you gossiped and said everything the gift of righteousness brought you to heaven well done and there are, you will see men who were slaughtered like animals men who they did all kinds of things you will see them there age 33 standing there happy because 33 is the standard right and you will see them stand and the matthias crown will be put on them all kinds of people and you will stand there no crown no applause because you just said jesus is coming the the old hymn we used to sing only remembered for what we have done remember that hymn yes we must train believers to reign we don't train believers to become our church members pastors you don't train believers so that i can get church members this member consciousness is destroying god's dominion mandate god's idea is not to have a pile of weak people looking at a superhuman human being called apostle joshua selman and every sunday the man of god is here god's idea is that he uses men called gifts to prepare the believers to reign are we together the next dimension after reigning is called governance god begins to apportion dimensions apportions mountains fairs of influence that represents his desire and the people you have now trained and are still training are now allowed to begin to occupy these dimensions this is god's idea being a church member for 10 years and not doing anything for god no soul winning no building institutions that advance the agenda of god is a total waste of time that may be religion that may be christianity in quote but that's not kingdom hallelujah we're going to pray our time is up i gave this illustration to help you understand that when he said have dominion the idea is not outshining people the idea is understanding that 
the gift of righteousness alongside the abundance of grace that is supplied on the strength of knowledge access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the systems of god empower you to now begin to occupy occupy does not mean build a house for yourself occupy does not mean buy a jeep listen carefully occupy does not mean um um carry all kinds of Gucci designers, Louis Vuitton, and all of those things are only the fringe benefits. Are we together? They are to be able to create an ample condition for you to be effective. So you don't rejoice and say, look, I am enjoying. Why? Look at my house. Look at five cars. Look at ten shoes. Look at trips abroad. And you put them like crowns. Whoever talks like that does not know God and does not understand the dominion mandate. So my pride and your pride is not in our cars. Have the cars, but that's not the pride. The pride is not that you are now wearing a hair of 250,000. That is useless if it did not help you advance the kingdom. Your pride is that God gave me money and I walked the systems of the kingdom because I understood I would be a kingdom financier and I used that money I sponsored a TV station that now created a platform for people to receive Jesus for people to rise for people to be built I built a university that was able to empower people they were agents of national transformation at the same time addicts for God I was able to raise a school of ministry that mentored and guided people and they became firebrand apostles and pastors this is kingdom check what you celebrate there are things that are worth celebrating pat you at the back but that is not it doesn't make any sense in the spirit i have 10 estates nonsense truly speaking i have 30 shoes nonsense if i don't balance this many of us are on the way to destruction because this is what we call christianity we come and jump around and say my faith is working why i have 30 suits look at my picture with the owner of so 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 and so oil company and you gather them around and live your entire life while you are old you just say you know i lived a successful life that's a wasted life a life of purpose and a life of meaning is a life that contributes to fulfilling the dominion mandate what is it take charge what is it expose creation to who i am and what i am and i've taught you that the dominion mandate is twofold one establishing christ in the hearts of men you must establish christ in the hearts of men that's why soul winning is non-negotiable please hear me if you are a christian and you are not winning souls god is not happy with your efficiency there is something wrong winning souls is not for preachers winning souls is your contribution to giving more space for people to know him love him and to extend his influence the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor the more and more we find people who love jesus and surrender their hearts to him and the more we can permeate our environment with the ideology we'll talk about that next week of the kingdom we are fulfilling the dominion mandate now that you are born again apostle i don't know what to do return back to the dominion mandate now that you have received the, the gift of righteousness contend for the abundance of grace how does it come grace and peace comes through knowledge multiplication through knowledge access it takes a long time the bible says you don't just reign with grace that grace must be lavish it must be in abundance that means you must be a bank of knowledge you must be a bank of understanding you must be a compendium of kingdom mysteries and on the strength of those mysteries you reign rise up on your feet We are going to pray three prayer points very quickly tonight. Prayer point number one. Lord, restore me. Listen. Lord, I don't like the way my life has been. I've been living my life. All I think about is food to eat, wife to marry, husband to marry, children to have. 
let me just complete my education and some of you are obsessed about marriage obsessed about children as if these things in themselves obsessed about cars oh lord you have to give me a jeep before august and god is saying come on come on come on i'm bigger than that you can't be on earth just for jeeps there is a higher and a nobler call i like you to pray and say lord re realign my life to the dominion mandate realign my life lift your voice and pray inside and outside your gifts are only useful when they are aligned to the dominion mandate and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion dominion over principalities and powers dominion over systems and structures dominion to legislate dominion to administrate hallelujah i'll be teaching you this next week but we can still pray lord this dominion mandate is complex where is my own part show me lift your voice and cry where is my own part we all have roles to play that's what we call our assignments that's what we call purpose are you praying Lord, I'm tired of living a useless life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Show me. Show me. Show me. Reveal to me the blueprint. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. The last prayer point for tonight lord prioritize my life take away distractions keep me focused on the things that really matter the things that have eternal value lift your voice and pray take away distractions take away distractions let me not major on the minors let me not major on the minors Take away distraction from my church. Take away distraction from my fellowship. Take away distraction. I want my life to be focused. 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 As I seek prosperity, as I seek cars, as I seek houses, as I seek influence, Lord, redirect my focus that these things do not distract me. That I will know they are only a means to an end. The end is fulfilling the dominion mandate. That the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like the waters the sea. Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer point. I know our time and, is gone. And I want you to pray and say, Lord, anything that has distracted me and has taken the place of this assignment, I pray that you restore. Restore. Some of you, you are the way you look for money, the way you, you exaggerated it, and God is out of money, money, money all the way. Money, cars, houses, children, marriage, whatever, job, job lift your voice and say lord i ask in the name of jesus christ cut away cut away attachments ungodly attachments attachment to things attachment to motives attachment to things attachment to motives Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to believe God. Don't say I've come for miracle service before. You see, let me tell you the truth. My assignment as a man of God is not to invite you. My assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace. 
so that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June otherwise what is the superiority of growth if the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now I'm only maintaining my spiritual level I'm not growing there was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles they went to Jesus asking a question and they said why couldn't we do this he said this kind there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money I've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no you have to understand this it's very important to know I have let me just still five ten minutes to explain this look at this this is 1,000 Naira look at this and if I give you this 1,000 Naira it can buy a bottle of water is that true it can even buy you lunch or dinner depending on where you eat but this cannot buy you a car this cannot pay a child's school fees but it is still money so if you want to pay a child's school fees you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it not every grace solves every problem if every grace solves every problem then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace Acts chapter 2 they were filled with the Holy Ghost Acts chapter 4 they were filled with the Holy Ghost again to what end it says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son there was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing Gehazi carried his rod the rod of Elisha and he came and laid it on the dead body the body did not rise but when the prophet came that dead body came back to life every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it I know men of God have prayed for you they are not fake just because you did not get the result it is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace and God grants the privilege of grace and that's why as men of God we must continue to grow in grace so that what we could not solve yesterday we can now solve tomorrow that is the proof of growth are we together now we are going to pray tonight it's going to be a very quick walk in this place I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord that things will so change in your life it will surprise you please rise up on your feet lift your voice and begin to mention specifics unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come rise up on your feet and please pray oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah yahweh yeah Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Turn my life around. Turn my life around tonight. Turn my ministry around. Turn my family around. Is someone praying? Turn things around. Shalabarata Katos.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit. And the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. Please don't be used to your situation. If you're a visitor here and you came, come insisting that I did not leave where I left to be here only to return back with stories. Uh-uh. That is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. A very strong anointing. Please bring them very quickly and then, and then we'll pray. And then we'll pray. When you have them, please bring them very quickly. The Lord is already moving. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I want you to believe, believe that God will step in and turn your life around. Hallelujah. Turn your life around. From the back right to the center i'm seeing the power of god come on someone now from the back right to the center from the back right to the center please bring them out right now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty an end comes to every oppression an end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this road. Right now it's like smoke just moving across. Right now from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by his spirit remember the bible says now the lord is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i command every oppression of darkness i want to pray now i see fire in this place this is what i'm saying by the spirit of the and listen at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ, responsible for any challenge and any predicament, it must let you go now. Inside and outside, online. Are you ready? Father, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. I cause every power, bring them out right now, every oppression of darkness, it must go now, it must go now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh, oh yeah, yeah, say. I'm still praying the Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it at the count of three again you're going to shout that name I see opening opening doors that have been closed are you ready now one two three be open now every closed door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors over families. Close doors over ministries. Close doors over destinies. 
I decree and declare, be open. Be open now. Bring them out, please. Be open now. Be open now. In the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three. Across the road. Online. Be free now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing, I'm seeing like stones in a vision. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm seeing like a strange fire. These are representations of altars. Listen, there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances. Fire is about to come from heaven right now. In the name of Jesus, you are ready to shout now. Father, every family here that is under any kind of ordinance, I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let fire from heaven liberate that family right now. One, two, three. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. We blot out handwritings. We blot out handwritings. Bring them out. I cause altars, yokes of darkness, ordinances, speaking against the people of God. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, 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 Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states. The eastern states. Right now God is bringing deliverance. The east, Abia, Anambra state, Enugu state, Eboi state. I'm seeing an anointing right now. Rest on people within that state. Let there be liberty right now. Let there be liberty right now. You belong to that state. The power of God is coming upon you. Right now. Right now. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. I'm seeing the map. The east. God is bringing liberty. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the map again. I'm seeing an arrow. And I'm seeing it. Go to Benway, Benway State. Right now, I stretch my hands. Benway, Benway. That anointing, you are from that state. Any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now. Must let you go right now. This is by the authority of the kingdom. Benway State. Benway State. Liberation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. release their destinies right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front there are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now bring them out right now by the spirit of grace in the name of Jesus the son of the living God things must change in your life my friend this young man lift your hands where you are there is oil being poured on your head right now 
right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head let it go right now in the name of Jesus Christ let him go now oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah can't wait Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. An entity comes to molest you in the night. You go to bed and a strange spirit just comes. Right now in the name of Jesus, the Lord is asking me to just count two. And at the count of two, that fire is coming on people right now. One, two, let that fire come now liberation from ordinances of darkness every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny be free now all those in front here i decree the power that holds you i come by the rod of a higher priesthood at the count of three let them go now one two three go leave them now release their destinies right now let there be restoration everything that has been stolen from hell i command the restoration by the spirit of the living god by the spirit of grace the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty be free right now please open your mouth and begin to pray everything that must leave your life insist it must leave your life now the angel of the Lord is removing arrows. I'm seeing arrows, arrows coming out of people. That's what I'm seeing. Arrows, arrows, arrows arrows right now right here arrows arrows go now arrows are being removed out of people in the name of jesus madam be free right now be set free now the lord is setting someone free here right now someone in this room i'm seeing fire just resting on someone be free right now in the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those outside, keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. The Lord asked me to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing right now. I stretch my hands. Fire from the front to the back. Everyone under any kind of yoke. Right now as I'm passing. Be free. Be free. Help them please. Out. Now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies now. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not. Help them. That yoke must let you go now. That yoke must let you go now. I'm passing this road right now. Once I pass you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Let that fire rest upon you right now. Everything that has refused to open, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. now. Close doors. Be open now. Be open now. Now listen, overflow two. I may not touch you, but in the name of Jesus, I pass your robe. Except God is not God. If there is anything sitting on your destiny, it must let you go. Right now, be free. Be free. I bring you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Open up your gates. Your gates. Gates be open. Destiny be open now. Be open in the name of Jesus. 
Be open now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Fire is resting on this road, just right there. I'm seeing someone, the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now. I stand by this grace. Please. Anyone here, anything that is not of God sitting on your destiny, right now at the count of three, all of you just, I'm seeing fire right now. And I'm seeing chains broken from people's legs. Right now, be, be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. There is a lady here. God is saying it is over. Right now, I'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now. Help them, please. Whether you're an usher or not, please, if anybody's falling close to you so they don't injure themselves. Hallelujah. Please shift. That lady, be free now. I'm pointing my hands to her. I command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Overflow three. Pray. Pray. Overflow three. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Overflow three. I came with an anointing. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Fire is falling from the top to the bottom. One, two, three. Go, go, go now. Every yoke, every altar. Be free now. Bring them out. Whether you are an usher or not, bring them out. Every oppression of darkness, right to the back. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be free now. Be free now. Bring them out. I'm seeing all kinds of spirits. I command every spirit that is not of the Christ. Release God's people right now. At the count of three. I'm seeing fire resting on people. And I'm seeing a number 41. 41 people. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Right now, be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now. Every door that has refused to open, I open that door right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 27 people here. The grace for speed is coming upon them. I don't know who you are, but right now, the grace for speed. I stand by the anointing from the front to the back. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that anointing right now. Speed, I release speed over your life, over your destiny. Receive speed in the name of Jesus. Speed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Overflow three, hear me. There are people here, the Lord is telling me, no one rises in your family. When they get to a level, something brings them bow. And the Lord is saying, I should shift you by prophecy. I stand right now, I don't know where they are, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing the number 17. Lord, I don't know where they are here, but in the name of Jesus, I declare, move to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. Hallelujah. I'm looking at 14 people here. You have the call of God upon your life. And right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you. 14 people. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. 
apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, Deborahs. Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you, O oh, prophet of God, may that fire find you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 15 people here. Overflow 3. The spirit of revelation is coming on you. Unusual insight. I don't know where they are. But right now I'm seeing light. Not fire. Light. Light coming on people. 15 people. Step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace. Right now in the name of Jesus. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Main auditorium, please lift your hands. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. The grace for speed. I'll pray it on everybody. But the main auditorium, there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people. They will begin to run by the anointing right now. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Main auditorium, I stretch my hands. At the count of three like Elijah, may that grace come. One, two, three. Receive that grace right now. In the main auditorium, step into the anointing for speed. In the name of Jesus. Overflow three, lift your hands. Every door that has refused to open over your ministry, over your life, held down by witchcraft, in the name that is above all names, at the count of three, I'm seeing doors open in the spirit. One, two, three, let that door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. The Lord wants to avert death over a family. This year alone, between last year and this year, four people have died in your family. Four people have died. And in the name of Jesus Christ, an anointing is coming upon you right now. Let death be averted now in the name of Jesus. Now listen, all of you at Overflow 3, and the extension there whatever must live your life as i'm passing this place please i am releasing my faith open your mouth now and declare lord it must live my life now go ahead go ahead pray please all those in front here the spirit that ties your destiny i command at the count of three let them go now one two three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies make sure you are praying make sure you are praying the power of god is resting on someone here there's an anointing coming on someone right here in the name of jesus there's an anointing coming on someone here and the lord is saying it comes to an end that family crisis comes to an end the power of god is resting on someone by my left here right now receive that anointing let it go in jesus name be free right now in jesus name the power of god is resting on someone here right here i'm seeing an anointing right now it's a prophetic grace there's someone here, a prophetic grace is coming upon you right now by my left here. In the name of Jesus, drink of that anointing. Drink of that fountain. May that grace rest upon your life right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says it is over. Over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at me, my friend. The Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the spirit. I lay my hands on you. Drink of that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
I'm seeing what looks like smoke, just this region where, I'm, where you are looking at me. Right now, there are four people. I'm seeing the power of God, like a wind, just coming on them, just this road. Right now, Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Right now, the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over. He's taking away captivity, four of you, by the Spirit of grace. Let it be over right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a family here. Marriage does not happen in that family. But I'm seeing fire rest right now. The embargo is being broken now. The embargo is being broken. Whoever those people are, an anointing is coming on you now. For the sake of your family, that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now. Is breaking right now. In the name of Jesus, please lift your voice and pray. Everybody, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. There is one of you among those standing here. There is a call of God upon your life. An anointing is coming upon you. You will be mightily used by God. Where is that person? Spirit of the living God. The hand of God just near the gate here. The power of God is coming upon that person right now. A new dimension in the spirit. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. May you step into that level in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend. Touch this gentleman for me. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands over you. I command. I'm seeing chains all over your body. I command those chains to give way now. In the name of Jesus. Release him now. Let him go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I cut those chains. I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe. Let me pray for those here. Please, all of you are here. I'm, the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence. I'm seeing snakes. And I'm seeing five people. There is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now. In the name of Jesus, may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones. Now, five of you, right now. These spirits, my God. My God, I'm seeing something living right now. Release them now. Release, no matter how long, release them now. It is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I declare emancipation now by the Spirit of the living God. Come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are a gala. I want to pray for you. Are you alone? If you came here alone, what do you do? I want to pray for you. The spirit of death is upon you. And the Lord is saying I should pray for you. So that those dreams you used to have. Seeing dead people. Is that true? You have dreams and... Too much, yes. The Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now. I declare in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The... There, is, there is someone here. Hi. Academic delay over your family is breaking right now i just please don't be carried away acting this thing i shunnedly to help people experience god i'm praying i don't know where that family is but now scattered in this congregation i stretch my hands let the anointing of the holy spirit family right now i'm seeing a family here none of you has a job none of you there are even a few graduates but nobody at all it's like the doors of jobs don't open. Right now, you're going to sense fire come up your hands. Real physical fire. And the Lord is saying, by that, help them. By that, that embargo is broken. Lord, I, I declare right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the Spirit. Please begin to pray in the Spirit. Don't say you are not inside. God can locate you from any direction. God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life. There is, that is coming upon you. It's a healing anointing. I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to work. 
effectually now step into that grace in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now listen among all of you from here to here the grace for speed is coming on two people listen those two people will start running now please hold them hold them so they don't enjoy themselves that anointing right now all across two people. you can't control yourself hold them please whether you are an usher I release that grace speed two people strange speed God is ending delay right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing two of you a prophetic anointing you are not prophets but you have been desiring this grace the grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands may that anointing find you right now accuracy of sight and help them help them please help them please in the name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ of Jesus Christ an angel of the Lord is taking away reproach there is a family here the Lord is saying the captivity ends now an anointing is coming upon you right now it's now in the name of Jesus someone here is it your sister has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Who is that? Listen, where, where is she? At home. What of you? Come. How long? Who has had three miscarriages? Three miscarriages. Go and tell her she will have a baby girl. That the Lord is giving her a baby girl. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you both. In the name of Jesus, let it come to an end right now. Let that captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, there's someone here, your family has a court court case. Who is that, please? Court case. Don't make sure you don't tell us, please. They want to kill you because of what? What did you do? What did you do? Hold on, I have to... Where are you from? Where is that? I have to pray for you. You have bad friends. Hold on, let me talk to you. Eh? You have very bad friends. Bad friends. You need to be delivered. This is not even your whole life. Eh? You know what I'm saying, right? You need to repent, eh? Listen, when I make an altar call, run and come because the real salvation is you. It's not the issue of court case of this. You, you have friends that are criminals and we have to pray. You hear what I'm saying? God is locating you to help you. Listen, let me tell you, my dear people, let me. When God locates us like this, is because he wants to help. There's somebody here. Your name is Sarah. Where is that person? Sarah. Hold on, please. Don't, don't. Let me just prophesy. I, I, my heart is full. God wants to visit people. Stand up. Who is Sarah? Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? No, no. Where state of origin? I want to pray for you. Who is Godia? Yeah. Godia. The Lord wants to visit you right now. Acting God truly wants to change your life. Yeah? I want to pray for you. Whose mother is in the hospital? I'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here. Your mom? Come. I'm seeing lying down in Portacot, Port, uh, yes, I Portacot. You came from Portacot. Yes. Go on. I'm going to pray. For, do I know you? I've never seen you. I want to pray for you. God is turning your situation. Please, as you are standing, let your heart be open. Your people may be far. Don't ever think. I'm just because I come outside like this to encourage you.
to let you know that you must not make it inside anywhere. Are we together? The power of God is going to come upon you. A loud shout. That will be the person I'll prophesy to right now in just those outside here. It's not something you can stand. This is a sign and a wonder from the Spirit of God. That's not the shout. The shout is coming. It's a loud shout. Please bring the person when that happens. That's the shout. Bring the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, lift your hands. Jesus, come. Do you? What are you doing? What do you do? Of God, your own church, you are assisting someone. You came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother, but you came to take fire. Stand up. Why you came? Listen to me. You are going to go back and you will step into a dimension of signs and wonders that will surprise you. Sarah, in the name that is above all names, every oppression over your family, I come against it right now. I'm still hearing that name, Godia. Who is that? Hold on, please. Hold on. Where are you from? Huh? You are from Kat Saminaka. Hold on, please. Your sister. Blood sister. Same father, same mother. You've been praying for God to locate you. It's okay. You. Hi. The spirit of death is over your family. Huh? That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people. They will come and they are calling you. Sometimes they are saying you should eat together. This is the spirit of death coming on the family. But in the name of Jesus, I use them as a point of contact. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you. Help her. I caught spirit now. Name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family. Money does not stay in your house. No matter what happens. Once resources enter. You love God. But resources. Something must happen. Either sickness. Or they will steal it. Or something will come up. I'm seeing what looks like a blue flame and it's resting on at least five people and the Lord is saying an end comes to financial hardship. Father, where are they? Right now, I stretch my hands. Let that anointing locate you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. My friend, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. An end comes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray in the spirit, everyone. My dear, look at me. I command that spirit to leave you now. Of darkness must let you go in Jesus' name. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Please pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, everyone. Madam, help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it. I command everything that is not of God to let you go now. Release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oppression leaves right now. Someone here, there is a spirit that has oppressed your family. It must go now. I command that devil of darkness, help her please. That spirit must leave now. In the name of Jesus. Please everyone pray in the spirit. Everyone pray in the spirit. God is visiting us right now. Shela kaproska dabarunda shalakose. One media person here, there is an anointing resting on someone. The Lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family. I'm seeing it by the Spirit of God. Captivity coming to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, let it end now. By the Spirit of the living God. Let it end now in the name of Jesus. My friend, I'm seeing what, what looks like a towel on you. And the Lord is wiping away infirmity. In the name of Jesus. Infirmity. Let it go right now. Please make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. The spirit of death. There is a family here. That spirit must go now. 
the spirit of death release them now in the name of Jesus release them now release them now the spirit of death there will be no obituary I command that devil to go now madam excuse me madam look at me come Are you a man of God? Come, you too. Please come. I don't know you. Where are you coming from, sir? Where do you, what do you have to do with Adamawa? Is it Anambra? Huh? Who is from Anambra? Me, from Anambra State. You came all the way. Ah. There is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you. Number two, there is speed in ministry. That God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're a ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. Can I pray for you, sir? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, drink of this wine, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Mommy, let me pray for you. Hold on, please. Please stand up. Stand up. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 The Lord is visiting. The Jennifer I'm seeing, you are outside. You are holding a child. Jennifer. Jennifer, is there someone like that? Oh, please oh, confirm. I'm, what's your name? They always confirm before you allow Jennifer, them. Sir. Jennifer, is this your child? Yes, sir. Where are you coming from? From this is my state. Huh? From GRA. No, no, where, where are you coming? Kaduna State. Kaduna State. Yes. I want to pray for you. So that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you. Does Amen. it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Well, this boy has a great destiny. Forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened. I want to pray for you. The Lord located you to bless you. What's his name? Fortune. 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 Yes, I will pray for you. Mama, where are you coming from? I came from Togo. You came from Togo? Yes, just yesterday. Just yesterday? Yes. What are you trusting God for? Oh, my daughter in America. She's the one that sent me to you. She has been seeing you in her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come. So that through me you will not get her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter. But it's you. First, that back pain. Jesus. Huh? That back pain that you have, you get up in the morning and there's severe back pain. That back pain will leave you now. That's number one. Number two, the dead people you see in your dream. Eh? Sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died, but they are alive talking to you. I need to pray for you. And then number three, God is going to visit your daughter. Tell her the month of August is a month of breakthrough. And in the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please, sir? You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? Uh, uh, Dambo International. Because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Yes, sir. Where? With uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's a school. Did I you know. apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing that they are going to give you a job. Huh? I will pray for you, sir, because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you, and that grace is going to come, and God will shift you to a dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one. Yes, sir. I have one outside. No, hold on. Don't be embarrassed, eh? 
I'm seeing one child, then the vision changes and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one, you have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son outside. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. Yes, the, yes sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you are great children. You understand? Please don't fight that child, eh? Madam, you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come, but may God grant you the grace to manage things well. Sir, there is a grace of wealth that is upon you. Please look at me. It looks like you are a teacher, but your destiny is not a teacher. You are a real kingdom financier, and there is a grace for finances that should come upon you. Please look at me. You see this woman? She's a good woman. Don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman. And don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, God gave you a good woman. She's a good woman. Madam, you're a good woman. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you, sir. Please hold my hands. In the name that is above all names, I open up every closed door over your life and destiny. I shift you to that realm of wealth in jesus name the person look up please the person who comes to molest you when you sleep it comes to an end now in the name of jesus every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever in the name of jesus i don't know why why are they here who is sarah Are you married? We are not more together. Huh? I have two children, but we are not together with the You are father. not together with your husband? Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that he can redeem, eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. Aye. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, this, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you. And when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness from the midst of you. Taking away sickness. My dear, in the name of Jesus, is it the same man that has the children? Yes. Huh? Yes. Why doesn't he want to marry you? He didn't pay for my dowry. He didn't pay for your dowry? Yes. Go and tell him that I said he should pay for your dowry. Huh? Dowry is not building project. He should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance. Please. At this level, it's no longer about their comfort. The children need a father. May God grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing written in the air, polygamy. God is breaking that spirit now. No, 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 just please, just keep quiet. I'm ministering. There is a spirit of polygamy. Everybody in that family, you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone. That anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit. It's a covenant. It's not a desire. Coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble. Right now, that spirit, please help them. In the name of Jesus, inside, outside, everywhere, the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. The spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. Sir, let me pray for you. Where are you coming from, sir? But God, what do you do? Do business. You do business. But things are not going well. Yes, huh? If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing you in the court because of money, debt. Huh? I hope you're not embarrassed. You came here so that I pray for you. What are you trusting God for? I'm trusting God for breakthrough in my business. Breakthrough in your business. First, your... My wife, uh, I've listened to your tape for about seven days now. And the last dream she had, you came to pray for her. I she insisted that you come through the night today 
I will pray for you. More than business breakthrough, sir, is your relationship with God. Do you understand? Please don't be embarrassed, but your relationship with God. In this kingdom, we prosper as our souls prosper, not at the detriment of our soul. So that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life. I pray that God will cause your heart to love him more than money in the name of Jesus. And that in so doing, he will bless you and lift you. I decree and declare, I don't know why all of you came, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that everything that is not of God leaves you right now. Where is this lady from? Come, where are you from? I'm from Nesara Ostage. You are from where? Nesara. How many are you? I'm from extended family. We are many. Plenty. You are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but oh. in my mother's side, we are eight. Two have gone. We are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life, I drive him from your life now and forever. Amen. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. The man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the Son Amen. of the living God. You will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time. He cannot call you. He's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? So you have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? I'm learning salon. Huh? I'm learning salon. You are, I'm not here. I'm learning salon. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord help you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see these kinds of vision. The moment I see these kind of things is a sign that, you know, the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There, there is a way that you are good, but it's like people continue to misunderstand you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Sakato I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an anointing coming on those people. That veil that covers your face, always putting you in trouble. I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now, please listen very carefully. God is touching everyone, every single one under the sound of my voice. Three things will happen right now. Number one, make sure you are here with your prayer request. If you are not here with it, please pen down. It's an act of faith very quickly. What you're trusting God for, lift it up. Let the ushers have it. Number two, we're going to minister to the sick right now. We'll do it very, very fast. And then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you are doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And, but then aside from that, um, overflow one, please listen, listen. From the start of overflow two, that means the end of CGC, and inside here, that's overflow two. Um, overflow three is from the end of CGC down to second equa. Okay, you are overflow two B. Let's call it 2B. Are we together? Then the overflow from the beginning of this fence, down, right down there, we'll call you overflow 2C. Please listen. Then there's overflow 3. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. This is the main auditorium. This is overflow 1. This is overflow 2. Then from this place down to second equis overflow 2B. From that same place down is overflow 2C. So that, so that you would know. If you are trusting God, no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb, I will pray for you. But then all who are in here, overflow 1. I mean overflow here. Please, you are trusting God for healing. Come stand here. Overflow 1, come and stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow 2, 
stand in front of your projector stand overflow 2a please create a space for them there overflow 2a create a space for them there and then overflow 2c stand in front of your projector stand and then overflow 3 you can stand in um, in front of your projector stand those online connect by faith and then we'll pray we'll pray with you we're going to do this very fast we thank god there are many hands today and while they minister to you i would like you to believe god for a miracle you are a man of god you are a ministry here open up your heart and connect you are trusting god for the grace for signs wonders make sure that you connect the worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that and concurrently while that is happening please make sure you submit your prayer request everyone make sure you pen down your prayer request and then we're going to pray on it and let the god of heaven visit us right now in the name of jesus praise the lord um ejimi and promise and bishop manasseh Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh will do Overflow 3. There are quite a number of people there. Overflow 3. Um, Benga will do Overflow 2. Overflow 2. Pastor Alpha and Ima, you do Overflow 1. Um, overflow 1. We need a way of reaching Overflow. Kenny. Kenny will do Overflow to be overflow to be we'll do overflow to be and then isaac isaac in media you will do overflow to see let's make it that way praise the lord father we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of jesus that as we minister to everyone across let your healing power touch deliver set free in the name of Jesus do this and be glorified even by the power of the Holy Spirit please we'll do it very very fast and while you are seated make sure you are agreeing releasing your faith in the name of Jesus madam you lift lift your hands you this woman no the one wearing blue and white yes lift your hand I'm seeing oil coming on your head and the Lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you this is what i'm seeing an anointing is coming on you right now and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life in the name of jesus father let there be miracles signs wonders in the name of jesus christ amen let's stretch your hands to the prayer request begin to pray in the spirit lord you are the god that answers prayers i decree and declare in the name of jesus pray over these requests is that these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever there is a covenant of answered prayer in this place lift your voice and pray father i decree and i declare i prophesy i proclaim by the spirit of grace that this is a representation of the pain of people a representation of their hunger when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion are you praying decree and declare that everything written here in the name of Jesus will become a testimony everything written here we invoke the power of the Holy Ghost upon every request here supernatural deliveries terminations of delay open doors new spiritual dimensions in the name of Jesus admissions graduations jobs marriages children restoration advancement promotion in the name that is above all names we decree and declare make sure you are praying make your declaration this that are brought before the god of all flesh will never 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 return as a disappointment i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit those online joining us from all over the world connect in the name of jesus 
from America to Asia, the UK, Canada, everywhere, we decree and declare that your requests are turned into testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want you to understand that this is not a ritual. This is a mystery. Are we together now? There are all kinds of testimonies that have come in. I can prophesy and there is so much. I can be limited. I cannot discern everybody's expectation. But this is a representation of your hunger. It's a representation of your tears. And let me tell you this. Please don't get familiar with this. This is not some, some spiritual thing just for the fun of it. There is power in what we are doing. It's guided by understanding. It's guided by an anointing. And God has a covenant. He's protected by his jealousy. In the name of Jesus, Paul said, For this cause I, Paul, bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you. In the name of Jesus, I declare upon you that the Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus, every request here that is a death sentence, cancer, HIV, and any kind of incurable disease, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. Every impossible situation represented here, may the God of wonders arise tonight in the name of Jesus and do wonders by the power of the Holy Ghost. For those of you who have submitted these requests, on behalf of your loved ones, I declare, may the angel of God's presence, these angels that do not know time and distance, may they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and birth supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life, we're entering the second half of the year. It says, revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the year. I decree and declare, every spiritual weariness, every prayerlessness, it dies right now in the name of Jesus. Passion for the things of the Spirit like never before hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus I declare prayer fire like never before let it rest upon your life now I decree and declare an appetite for God and the things of God I declare you receive it right now I pray over your life every long standing issue you have prayed you have fasted, you have sought counsel, it has refused to change. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, by this time next month, return with your testimony. By this time next month, return with your testimony. Please believe it, don't just shout amen, believe it. I come against patterns. You have seen it in others. You saw it in your father. You saw it in your loved ones. You saw it in your siblings. Now it's beginning to happen. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cancel every pattern now. I cancel every pattern now. It works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Then something happens. You will see it, but you never possess it. I declare right now, that spirit that makes you to see things and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Everything that was given to you in the realm of the spirit already, I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, this month coming, it must enter your hands. I declare that it must enter your hands. There are families where is the women that feed the men. 
Have you seen such families? No matter how hardworking the men are, they never feed the family. They get up in the morning and play draft from morning till night while the women go to fend. It's an anomaly. I declare by the Spirit of God, I'm praying for the men now, the grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early. Receive that anointing right now. It says, satisfy me early. I'm saying it again. Everybody here who is a man, and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life. I decree and declare, like Jacob, Laban must let you go in the name of Jesus. I pray for every Mordecai here. You have been good to others. You have been good to kings. Your records have been written, but you have not been rewarded. In this season, by the Spirit of God, we open a book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anyone here called jobless by the God of heaven, between now and the next three months, like the ark of God in the house of Oben Edom, I decree and declare jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain. May my God give it to you. Every dying business, hear the word of the Lord. I don't care what has happened. By the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, I speak to you. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Everyone who is in ministry here, no matter what level there are dimensions, I pray for you. You will go back to your various churches, fellowships, and assemblies and a dimension of fire, a dimension of insight you have never seen, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone here called barren by the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, return with your children. These are not empty prophecies. Believe them. They are backed up by the jealousy of God. They will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where the helpers of your destiny are. But in the name of Jesus, every man who must arise in this season for your sake, to favor you, wherever they are around this globe, by the spirit of grace, I call them to your life now. I call them to your life now. The Bible says that strangers shall feed your flock. It says your gates shall be open continually. It shall not be shut day nor night that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. People you do not know, I compel them to be interested in your lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prayed a prayer like this one time. And one of us, God just opened a door. And a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira. Listen, it doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. There is the creative dimension of prophecy that can order things in your life. Every area of struggle, I stand by the God of heaven who is called Ebenezer, the God of Jeshurun. In the name of Jesus, receive help from the Lord. I want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects. But it seems to never go out of the book. You have ideas, you have projects. It's just to connect you with somebody who has the interest. Nobody helps you on their own. They are called by prophecy. In the name of Jesus. Right now I connect your ideas to your helpers. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I forgot to pray for those who are in the various institutions writing their exams. I know that many people had started their exams. Some have written. And the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense. You need the mercy of God in the name that is above all names. Much more than what you have written in the name of Jesus. May the mercy of God show up in your exam. There is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy. Please pay attention. Our time is gone, but I want to speak this into your life. There are people who are not very smart. The prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable. The prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn. It's a system of God's mercy. It will be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles. There are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation. But there is the ordinance of prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the God who has helped me by His grace, the God who has helped this ministry, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project in the name of Jesus Christ everyone here due for promotion but has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men go back into your next level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ finally I want to pray for you honor is the ability to discern to celebrate and to reward a man for his uniqueness it's not enough for your value to be discerned you must live a rewarded life you will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life I pray for you the eyes that can perceive and can discern your value I connect you to those eyes in the name of Jesus Any pit you have found yourself in, I must pray this. Financially, whatever it is, you have found yourself in a situation where only God can bring you out. May that God you believe in bring you out of it now. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word. The Lord declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life, by the force of right words and by the power of the, no, the name that is above all names, I declare to you, may your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ may you return with testimonies some of you this night before you get to your homes your phones you will see text messages that are full of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise we bless you because you have honored this house you have made it a place of answers you have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. Or you are here, you are saying, man of God, I've seen the wonders. I once gave my heart to the Lord. But as it is right now, I need mercy. I need grace. I need to start afresh. You are here inside overflow one two three and all the other annexes i want to give you five minutes you want to make it right with jesus wherever you are i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here it'll be my joy to lead you to jesus christ don't wait for someone be the first i'll count one to five wherever you are please start running clear the way for them please outside one quickly quickly please if you're coming run quickly run to jesus two Win that war today, win that war today, win that war today. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Three, someone is still coming. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. I expect people to come from outside. Please clear the way for those coming from outside. Clear the way for those coming from outside. Overflow, one, two, three. If you're coming, don't be sluggish. Run very quickly. We're out of time. Run quickly. Run quickly. We're out of time. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Give them a big God bless you whilst they come takes a lot of courage but win that war young and old run to Jesus the Bible says ye must be born again <laughs> hallelujah praise the Lord I want to salute all of you thank you so much for coming to make this decision lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me you're not reciting a poem this is from the depth of your heart Jesus is here say after me Lord Jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I have seen your wonders and I declare that I need you this night I declare that you are my Lord you are my Savior you are my King I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life. I am a child of God. I'm changed forever. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for. I thank you because when you hung on that cross, they were worth your blood. They were worth the tears. They were worth the death. I pray in the name of Jesus, according to scripture, your sins are forgiven. And the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare forever you go from glory to glory even by the Spirit of God everything that is not of God I come against it right now the grace to live victorious is released upon you from today you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate you I salute you very quickly everyone in concert I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands and you have a few people just welcome you on our behalf god bless you very quickly Let's hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.